Let's welcome another episode of Sharing a Drink with Matt today. I'm talking to you Somerset Parade. Let's do it. You got me, mate? How are you, buddy? Oh, hey, right. Good, good, good mate. Love the hat. <laughs> yeah, she's an old one. Mm. <laughs> so, how have you been? Yeah, good, man. Good. Yeah, we're hard at it at the moment. We're, rec- we're recording at the moment, just at our oh, uh, parents' house. Yeah, yeah, we're just going over some vocals and stuff. So, thought I'd take a break and have a chat with you. <laughs> yeah, excellent, man. Um, by the way, I've got an offshoot of this show. It's um, sharing a drink with Matt, the the album review. Oh, so, yeah. When you're ready to put that album out, just give me a yell. And is that yeah. a Woodstock you're drinking? No, Jack Daniels. Oh, go higher. I've, I've got, I've got, I've got one of those too. I've got, I've got one of those. I've got, <laughs> got a little Sorry. bit of everything. So Somerset Parade, where'd that come yeah. from? Oh, well, well, originally, look, I've told this story heaps of times, and I reckon I've really, I've lied a lot of the times. I've tried to make it sound like it was some really cool story, but it really came out like it was just. We liked the word Somerset. And uh, we looked it up and it was already a decent band from uh, New Zealand already had that name. So we had to sort of muck around and try and think what we wanted to do. Yeah. So a Somerset Prey come from, um, I I liked uh, phrase names. So I liked a day to remember. uh, And I liked uh, uh, Mayday Parade and stuff like that. So sort of a Somerset Parade sort of come across from that whole sort of vibe. It just felt right. Uh, We're a bit more of an easy call what pop punk band when we first started. So it sort of fit a lot more, I, I guess, back then because it really had that easy core sort of vibe to it. Uh, yeah, now we've just owned it and made it our own. So like our style's yeah. gone from all the way from pop punk to now I think people call it like industrial or new metal or whatever you want to call it. But it's a bit of everything, really. We do what we want, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all, that's all you can do, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's it. And the band's been going for like, you know, eight years now. So, like, you know, things change, tastes change. So, and, how, you know, so how have things changed in the eight years? Oh, so, like, we'll, look, we've had a lot of member changes over that eight years. Like, really going back to the very start, I'm the only original member in the band. Wow. Uh, yeah. uh, so, the, the whole lot's changed over the course of that eight years. So, obviously, music tastes are going to vary when one part of the five is 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 different you know like or the same i should say but um yeah look um and i i think we've got a little bit more serious about our writing too like before we just write <laughs> we just write so <laughs> there's one of them over there pulling his pants down uh so yeah we're yeah like it's just sort of uh like our writing's grown like i think before it was just about having fun and uh relying on how you know wouldn't say how good we were but the the you know the patterns and everything we had set the formulas we used uh we're yeah. sort of now we're experimenting there's a lot more synths there's a lot more um post production uh a lot yeah a lot more of that sort of going into it and um that this album's taken us 3 years uh, so wow. far, and we're, and we're looking at finishing uh, at the end of this year to release next year. Uh, was sort of an agreement with um, you know the label to have it wrapped up by this year, um, so we can release it next year and hopefully focus on touring and all that next year. Hopefully, that's that's, that's the plan. Yeah. But um, yeah. Okay, so about you, what was what was on your um on the stereo when you were growing up? Oh, look. What I think started it for me, like really wanting to play music, was Nirvana. I think uh, realizing that you know you could play power chords and you could just put your anger and aggression into a you know, in- instrument and it could sound good. <laughs> I think that was uh, sort of where it sort of started for me. But then, you know, as I started to push further on with the music that was coming out, I'd also sort of go back and you know look look you know like bands like the Ramones were a big influence on me personally. Um, you know, I, 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 like I like the Beatles, like everyone else, but I, th- I think it was more like, uh, yeah, things like the Ramones and Misfits and stuff like that really spoke to me from that sort of yeah. sort of era. So although I've yeah. graduated into stuff like, you know, like we're more in the Lincoln Park sort of realm, it, it all still stems from those same <laughs> those same yeah. bands that everyone else grew up with. You know, like I think you, you need to respect and uh, understand where it all started to be able to push it further. Yeah. Yep, for sure. So what was mum and dad listening to? What were you subjected to as a child? Oh, 
actually it was pretty good music, I reckon. Uh, so like my mum was writing to things like The Angels, uh, oh, one, of, one of her favourite bands. Um, I've, I've seen Divinal. Bad Company. Bad Company, the Divinals are a good one. Uh, like all that sort of Aussie rock stuff really, really yeah, it was really what I was subjected to. So it wasn't really yeah. anything super light. Like I know a lot of other people sort of come from their parents with not quite light music. My, it was pretty good, hard hitting Aussie rock and roll. So um, always got a good flavour. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Sounds yeah. Sounds <laughs> like um, you were actually subjected to some good shit because Australia, I don't think, other than, you know, the, the crap that they put out with, you know, the pop shit, back in the 80s and that, uh, the, the the bands that came out were fucking fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, the Aussie were. I, I myself actually um, call Chrissy, uh, Chrissy Amphlett, I call her the queen of punk. Yeah, that's that. Well, you know, she she was fucking fat. Anyway, but this is about you. Um, <laughs> so, where, where do you see Somerset Parade in the future? Where, what, what have you got? Like, you've gone through many, many lineup changes. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, look, for, for us, it's pretty much like our, our focus for probably the last, pretty much since COVID hit, uh, we had to cancel a Japanese tour. Uh, and then we're like, so we, what do we do now? We do nothing. And uh, so that's why we decided, look, 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 let's start seriously working on this album. Uh, so we've, we're hoping to have it done and then be out like everyone else now and throwing it around. But it, it, it's just taken a, a lot longer for us. Uh, the, the, you know, we've had to basically learn a new style and all that sort of stuff as well. So the, the thing for us in the future is pretty much to have this all wrapped up and just to be, to be able to show that to the world early next year. Um, I think a lot of people will be surprised. I think they're starting to see the turn in our last couple of singles have been a little bit um, different from our earlier stuff. So it's starting to creep into it. But I think this album will sort of show people why it took, why it took so long. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot There's a lot in it. Uh, it was written with a production in mind. Instead of just jamming the songs out in a room and then going recording it, we, we sat in front of a computer for hours and going over every sound, every sample, every every possible scenario, wow. recording, re-recording. Some songs have been done like 14, 15 times. Yeah, um, whatever it needed yeah, to be yeah. done to get good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, excellent. Um, have you had that moment doing this album especially where you've thought, fuck this, I, this, I can't. And this is not for me. I, I'm, I'm not interested. Fucking this. Has yeah. it been? Have you gone through hard, hard times? A hundred percent. Like I, I guess, especially because it's taken so long. There's, there's times where you go, is it, is it really worth sacrificing everything to try and create something that you don't even know is going to work out in the end? And it's like, well, you know, with no risk, there's no reward, sort of thing. So for yeah. us, it's like if, if, if we can see the value in it, we just keep keep pushing you know like uh and do whatever we have to do uh, but we don't um we don't really hit when we we don't really hit the skids like when, when it gets too hard we sort of take a break from it get back together talk about it and then r- r- go again um because yeah. i find if you've got to sell each other ideas they don't really stick anyway uh it's the ones yeah. that every, everyone jumps in straight away they're the ones that seem to stay and they're the ones that seem to make it onto the album because everyone's just naturally feeling it they're not overthinking what they think's better yeah. and all that sort of thing. But, well, yeah, well, that's what, hard. Is, what is the creative process um, with this album? Well, with this album in particular, uh, so An- Andrew, our guitarist, is also uh, uh, like a music engineer. Uh, he's helped with a lot of the other ones that we've done up to this point, but he hasn't really taken the, the full reins. Uh, with this album, we sort of pretty much gave him the full reins to – uh, do it how he sees fit. So uh, a lot of the, the ideas originally, well, a lot of them come from demos. Uh, Andrew had a lot of demos floating around that he'd done years ago and recently and all that sort of stuff. And we basically took our time, filtered through them all and worked out what we liked and what we didn't like and then come in with our own ideas and then we sort of meshed them like that. But basically out of the five of us, the core writing group is basically me, Dan and Andrew. So um yeah dan's a singer and andrew's guitarist producer so between us three we basically do all the writing well majority of the writing um and it's just one of those things where we we haven't wrote, you know we haven't wrote all the other albums like that but it just felt natural once we started working on this material that that, that yeah. those three people have to be there pretty much all the time because it just yeah. it works <laughs> 
Um, I'm not saying so we'll, everyone else doesn't have input, but uh, it's definitely definitely three of us do a lot of the legwork. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what, how did COVID, how did that treat you? When, um, when it, Really crap, actually. <laughs> like just from from the band's po- point of view, anyway. Look, I think it was a tough time for everybody, but um, uh, it's sort of for us. Like we just got nominated for a Queensland Music Award. Uh, we we went we Excellent. went there. Everything was sort of starting to take off. Uh, we had a Japan tour lined up. We had other dates, uh, and then it was like three days after the Queensland Music Award, COVID hit, and then it was like everything just stopped. So we felt like we had all this momentum from our latest single. Uh, yeah. And all that, and ready, ready to roll, and then we just got sort of pipped at the at the finish line. So it was yeah. like a really deflating, I guess, because we'd sort of put so much effort and time into getting ourselves to that point, and now we feel like we're yeah. sort of starting again. Uh, but with the, this album, the, I guess that's sort of the whole point of it for us was to sort of feel like we're starting again. Let's just do something fresh. Let's just yeah. do something that we want to do. Uh, if it takes years, it takes years. Uh, um, yeah, and I think the main goal for us with this album was to try and get a label on board, uh, and yeah, we managed to make that happen. So, like all that sort of stuff was sort of getting to our overall goal of uh, you know touring most likely internationally next year if possible. Excellent. Well, hey, Japan loves Australian bands. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been wanting to go there. Look, we, we we went to Ukraine in 2018, and that was that was probably the best. That was an amazing tour. Yeah. Great people, uh, big shows. It was yeah, it was that was heaps of fun. So we did, we did want to go back there, but obviously that's not really an option right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I um, what, friends of mine um, have just toured over in Costa Rica. Oh yeah. And they they were they, I've gotten some amazing reviews about over there. Like these, it is a big scene. The punk, the 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 um, metal, the um, yeah, it's it's a big fucking thing over there, and like the, yeah, that's something you should have a look at, you know. Yeah. When, that sounds, when, that sounds good. See, I think where a lot of countries like that uh, really peak is the, uh, compared to countries like this or America and stuff like that. Um, they're starved for choice. Where over here. Like, why would I listen to a band that sounds like Slipknot when I can just wait till Slipknot comes? You know, I think a lot of people have that mentality. Um, yeah. So, but you got, you, you know, when we went over to Ukraine, we had people drive five hours to come watch us play. The, the crowd was singing our songs louder than we were singing our songs. We couldn't even believe that they even heard our song, you know. Like, yeah, so, it was right, like, so that sort of thing, they really get behind the bands and, and, and the live culture in a lot of pl- those places where, you know, they starve for choice. As soon as a band comes on, everyone's smashed up the front. You can't get any- anywhere. You know, it's where you hear people sort of still get their drinks, do whatever they want, you know, and I, yeah. don't, I do it too. I'm not saying I don't, but it's yeah. like it's just a different sort of vibe. You know, it's like as soon yeah. as a band you know, uh, enters the stage, you've got to look out on that floor because everyone just comes running in, you know. It's like yeah. Uh, yeah. so the, the, that was something unique and something different and, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um. What's what, what is the creative process that you go through, and especially on this album? Um, well, the, I, I think I think the main difference on this album compared to our earlier albums is instead of bringing the like writing a song and bringing all our parts to the table and then putting all our parts on and then working out what we like and what we don't like, uh, especially us three, we've really thought of the whole song. Like as far as like I'm writing. Uh, like synth parts and and all other back, back you know, singing parts and guitar parts that I'm not playing myself, but I wrote them and then vice versa. The other guys are doing the same. So people, we're having a vision of the whole song rather than just rocking in with our parts. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I think as a um, a freeing sort of way of writing is like you, you can go in there with this whole vision of, of something instead of just, I think the bass should sound like this or the car should sound like this. You know, you can go in there with, I think the whole thing needs to sound like this. Yeah. Yeah. And having that. Yeah. So uh, uh, like a lot of the songs like surreal, or are they tongue in cheek songs? Are they, you know, have you, is there a, is there a, th- yeah. a method? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I, I would I would say like our songs, like 
especially like the message they've definitely changed like I, like from our pop punk sort of era time like i would say everything was about getting drunk with your friends and uh you know a lot more uh just straight up fun issues uh where this album it's quite dark uh yeah it's um and yeah a lot of people are trying to put that on i guess on covid and just say like oh, a lot of people writing dark music is a covid and i guess yeah, to a degree, but like as a band, we've been through a lot of crap ourselves, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I think we've just wrote music how we feel, and we probably don't. It's not as joyous as a lot of the, a, a lot of our older stuff, but it's a little bit more uh, personal. Uh, it's all yep. uh, we use a lot. We use a lot of metaphors, so like yeah, you, we could be singing about one thing, but really the sentiment and yep. the feeling is really coming from somewhere else. Uh, and that's so, good. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. I just I don't, like, I don't like everything to spell. I don't like people to spell it out for you. I like yeah, people yeah, yeah. to take what they want to take from it. Exactly. Like it's. I, I, I find as a as a um, as a punter as a as a listener. Um, I like and when especially when I do these interviews, I, I won't I won't assume. Like I'll listen to a song and I go, yeah, I reckon that's about that. I won't, you know what I mean? I, yeah. Okay, I've got my thought process on that song, but I, I, I really like to ask the person, like, what's that song really all about? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because that allows you to connect to it a yeah, little bit exactly. better, I think. Uh, exactly. I've had people ask me what some of the songs are written about, and I basically refuse to tell them. <laughs> I don't want to wreck the song for you. It, it means whatever yeah. it means to you. You know, that's that's exactly. <laughs> that's the important part, and that's why uh, you know writing songs in that sort of way and with metaphors and things like that allows things to be straightforward, but also be a little bit dark and a little bit clouded. And I think yeah, it just it, it, open to interpretation. I guess is the right word. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, have you had a bad gig? Have you played somewhere and you thought, "Fuck, that just was shit." <laughs> not, not you were shit, but yeah. Oh yeah, look, I've had, I, I look, especially in older bands like this band, we've definitely had a, somewhere we've had, you know, not the not the best show, or we had sound problems or things like that. But I, I think the probably the main one that comes off my head a lot for me personally before this band started, I had a show. Uh, where they could not turn the PA up loud enough for it to hear any vocals. Uh, so I kept sort of telling them in sound check, it needs to go higher, it needs to go higher. And they wouldn't, um, they just said, oh, that's it, that's it. So I unplugged the uh, uh, the fallbacks and I threw them out into the crowd and they actually like didn't make it back. I think someone stole them. Uh, but I, uh, yeah. I we, 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 we didn't get paid for that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, like, like things like, like that. But I, I, I always try and see the positive, in, even in negative shows. Like even if something goes wrong, you'll, you'll know for next time what you can do or what, you know. So I look at it as, all the, as a bit of a learning curve. Like nothing ever doesn't, you know, everything happens for a reason. So if it happens, what can you do next time to, to not make it happen? Exactly. And and also have a bit of a thick skin. Like I, I think that, you know, when I really discovered that I had confidence playing was once I realized that when I go out there, if I play awesome or I play subpar, half the people are going to like it. Half the people are not going to like it regardless of what I do. So the whole thing is just go out there and enjoy yourself and have fun. So if you, if you look at it like that, you, nothing you do out there is going to make any difference as except yeah. like if you're having fun or not and energy, especially in sort of music we play. Uh, and I think energy with the crowds reciprocated. So if you're worried or you're sitting down there and you're not really focusing on projecting any energy on the crowd, you can't really expect them to give you any, any you know, any energy yeah, back. Exactly. So yeah. it's sort of the, the more wild they go, the more wild I go. And then the more wild I go, the more wild they go. And that, that that's sort of, how I think it really the energy should really transfer. Yeah. So have you have have you have you played a gig where you shouldn't have been on the bill? Um like you like we're sort of the odd band out or something like that? Is like, that what like you 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 you've got a gig, you're supporting a few bands, blah blah blah. Um you get there you start listening to the first few bands, they're all fucking rap. 
yeah, yeah. Or something, you know, or hip hop or something. Well, yeah, or... I, I, actually, actually, we have had a gig like that. Uh, we played a Bandito's Clubhouse in Ukraine. Uh, wow. Back in, back in 2018 we didn't know it was a banditos clubhouse when it got booked but uh in in, in saying saying that uh our tour manager said you didn't tell me not to book a banditos clubhouse and i'm like well that's true i did i, I did not Fair say enough. that yeah uh, and it actually turned out to be a really good gig but it, back to your question was uh all the bands before us were basically like pantera heavy uh and and back then like we're in our pop punk phase uh so we're more like good charlotte <laughs> and so we're watching we're what so we're watching all these bands play and we're like this is going to go down really bad like they are not going to look like and we were headlining the whole festival too and we're like and and, and we're like oh this is not going to be good like uh but it turned out actually really good they're really nice people but um when we played the show it gave a chance for all the guys to bring their girlfriends up and the dance with their girlfriends and have a drink and all that so it actually turned into a slightly different vibe but it was actually much appreciated because they got to sort of you know enjoy everything with their girlfriend you know, it's, we're a heavy that, band that your girlfriend will like that's how i describe us <laughs> that's a story you've got to tell your grandkids man <laughs> well, yeah, we've got we've got a couple of those from over there but i can't tell them all on <laughs> all on this interview <laughs> i'm in i'm in the process of getting a benefit a benefit gig together um it was going to be rock against water and it was the benefit was for for um lismore for the floods oh yeah we've, we've done a, we've done a couple of fundraisers down there for the floods yeah but i found that's exactly my point i i found out there was that many fucking benefit gigs and benefits that was happening for them i had to i i, I had to change it <clears throat> and i ended up because i wanted to stick with that raw rock against w kind of thing yeah. and instead of water i thought i might like rock against war and, oh, yeah. and the benefits for the ukraine yeah, well, we're we're right into that. We've, uh, as we know, people over there. We've we've sent money and uh, tried to do everything we possibly can to help. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's definitely something we're very strong about. Uh, have, yeah, having friends over there, and yeah, hey, sort where of here. Are you from? Where are you from? Uh, we're Brisbane. Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. Oh, if uh, if this thing happens, man, I'll give you I'll give you uh, you know a message and a big yeah, great man. to stand here for that. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure it's going to happen. I'm still waiting on the. That's the all right, venue. man. Yeah, yeah, hit us, sir. We'll see how we go. But Brisbane, fucking oath. Who? Um, do you like the Dream Killers? Are you a Dream Killer fans? Yeah, I, I played with the. I played in a band years ago that played with the Dream Killers. Uh, and uh, yeah, they're, 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 oh, I'm sorry. We were. Uh, well, I was big fans of Vicious. Do you remember Vicious back in the day? Uh, uh, uh yeah. Uh, Don from Vicious, he he was our manager for a little while. Uh, not this band, band band I was in at the time. Um, so yeah, like, I, I think we played with Vicious and we played with uh, Dream Killers and yeah. a, lot, a, lot, a lot of all those sort. Of, uh, no idea, I think was another one. And uh, yeah, yeah, red, chicken skins, chicken fucking... skins, yeah, 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 all, yeah. all those. Because uh, I, sort of I, I grew up on the Gold Coast and, and oh yeah, yeah, and I fucking. Queensland had thrust. Queensland had the best fucking the best music scene, and I couldn't understand why all these bands were going to Sydney. You know, when they they they, they had the best music scene in Queensland, and like we had the Playroom, we had the Patch, we had yeah. Roxy, we had yeah. Brisbane. You know, we had, um fucking uh, near Bogger Road Jail. There was this mad pub. I can't remember the name, but anyway. What's the what? What is the best? We've done the worst. So, what is the best gig that you've played? Um, probably. Oh, there's, oh, there's a few. Um, but if I really had to narrow it down, like the best for me, as far as like like the feeling I got from from the sh from the show, would have probably been our first show that we played in Ukraine. Um, rocking up to a country like that, not speaking the language, not knowing if anyone's going to like you, not knowing anything, uh, and then rocking up to a show. And you know, when we first rocked up, there was probably about thirty people there. Uh, we done sound check. Went, went backstage, uh, a tour manager came in and said, oh, there's a few more people here. And we're like, oh, good, good, you know. And then he, you know, the first band started playing. He come back into the dressing room and said, Yo, oh, there's some more people there. I'm like, oh, good, good. 
by the time we got out, this place was like packed full of like three, four hundred people in this tiny place. Yeah, you could not get any any more people in there. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it's very important we don't suck right now. You know? <laughs> and uh, so, um, and yeah, playing that show and hearing the noise and you know, people singing your songs. Um, and a good moment was we actually finished our set, and I was I was that exhausted that I went straight off the stage into the back room. Uh, and what ha- happened is it's actually like customary over there to play encores, like everyone sort of plays an encore. Okay. Uh, we yep. we didn't really plan for it. We just assumed we'd just play a whole set and be done. Um, yep. But they wanted an encore. So the boys are out on the stage thinking, well, Brad's not even here anymore. And, uh, you know, what are we going to do? And they said, if, we, if you want to get him out here, you just have to, you know, if you guys yell out enough, he'll hear. So they started, oh, they started up a chant. Of, they started up a chant of Brad, <laughs> and I could just hear this echoing through the whole place. So I've rocked back out, and everyone's cheered. And then we, then I'm like, look, let's just play a song. So we worked out something we could play and played oh, a couple man, of long calls. And, and, uh, and yeah, and like, and that show just it just escalated because even from that show, like once we went back to our hotel, there was like people in the lobby. So uh, the manager of the place had to tell us to come down and try and sort it out. So we went down there and my my idea of sorting it out was just, okay, we're all going out. Where are we going? So, hey. so I just took the whole crowd with me and we just went elsewhere and started drinking. So, um, oh, yeah, that's, that's that definitely sticks out. Yeah. I hope you got footage of that. For, yeah, yeah, there's some there's, there's some of me doing drinking some crazy shots there, uh, like uh, <laughs> they're on fire and all that. I was pretty wasted. <laughs> I remember before the gig. <laughs> Yeah, as we all do, even as punters. Yeah. We... <laughs> yeah um, right. All right. And this is great. I love this question because I've been getting different answers. <laughs> and like I've done, I've done about 40 interviews. Um, you've got the job to do a five gig gig, five band gig. Give me the five bands. And, hey, they don't need to be alive. Oh, yeah. So, so, it, 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 so, for, so for, like, for me personally, what I, yeah, what I would like to see, um, well, I have seen some of these bands before, but they'd still be on my list. Uh, Linkin Park would definitely be on, on that list. Um, probably Nirvana would have to be on that list. That's That's one I get all the time. Yeah, that, that that would that would definitely have to be on the list. Um, um, probably Misfits would be another one that I would I would I would like to see. Um, and oh look, again, bands that aren't super, yeah, you know, that I, we have not seen before. But I'd probably go Metallica is still one one that is is strong for me. Um, yep. And to be honest. Just because I haven't seen them and I'm sort of intrigued by it all, uh, uh, it's uh, probably an answer you haven't got before. But I'd say Nickelback. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. look, it's it's good. Like, I, I, you know, I think a lot they get a lot of a lot of slack for that whole generic thing. But I think if you yeah, do the yeah, generic thing better than everyone else, <laughs> yeah. it's sort yeah. of uh, the re- the reason it's called cool, it's popular is because everyone likes it. <laughs> Oh hey, he brought back the perm. Yeah, he brought back the perm. That's what you got to well, do. Well, it's funny. I saw an interview with him once, and he actually wow. said he goes like, uh, what, 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 "A person in you come over and goes, you know, he goes, I've done a bit of a quiz. Out of ten people that say they hate Nickelback, seven people own your album, and eight people are coming to your show." <laughs> <laughs> So if you look, if you look, they're, they're a band that everyone likes to hate, but they're they're doing all right for themselves. <laughs> and to me, it's just I'd like to just see what it's all about. I wouldn't say they're my favorite band or anything, but it's just no, no, no. It's just something I I I think I would like to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I I work I work for a um a thing um I when big when big bands come to win stadium in in Wollongong. I worked there. I unload the trucks, and we did um matchbox. No, it's all right. I got full. I got full power. You can steal my charger. <laughs> yeah, and um, we 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 did one night. We did um matchbox twenty. Oh yeah, and, and I, was, I I dig a few of their songs. I think. Three semi, three semis, three trucks. For one gig, like this guy, one of the trucks were just 
um, wardrobes. Yeah. For the guy, wardrobes, <laughs> and I'm thinking, like exactly what you were saying before. It's just like it's it's not a band that I like. I, I'd go, yay! I, I want to go see a million times. Yeah. But when they play, they I, I really actually enjoyed the shit, man. And I think yeah. that's what that's what it'd be like on the Nickelback scene. I think like, it's all about just keeping an open mind and just and yeah. just trying to experience what, what 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 it is and take it for what it is. You know, like uh, like I I think uh like it, you know. Like Chad Kroger, for example, has written music with a lot of people and a lot of bands that people will generally be okay with liking. But uh, yeah, Nickelback got a bit of a bit of a you know bad rap. But you know, like, yeah, but um, you know, like, oh, don't get me wrong. I think yeah, Chad Kroger said some things where it makes it pretty easy to hate him sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> I think we've, I think we've, a lot. Yeah. I think we're, I think we've all done that, you know. And a lot of people like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Ronnie Radke from Falling in Reverse. Yeah. Uh, he's got he's copped a real bad rap too uh, i think he's extremely talented um uh, but um yeah each to, each to their own you know i can definitely yeah. see why when people give nickelback the whole uh you know it's it's just generic uninspired sort of so I, I sort of can get that vibe some people really need to connect heavily with their music and they don't really connect with something that's uh designed for the masses you know yeah yeah well hey i went to this i went to this Festival, uh, fuck, I think it was 96 maybe. It was after the first big day out, so that that was 92. It was was called Alternative Nation. Oh, okay. It was L7, Lou Reed, um, Body Count, um, Jello Biafra did a spoken word. Um, the Rollins band, then Rollins did a spoken word. It went for the whole weekend, this whole fucking thing. And you know who the band that I enjoyed the most, which I was not looking forward to the most, was live. Oh, yeah, yeah. When they when they got up on stage, man, it was like my whole fucking being just went boom and just – I did not stagger. I was off my guts, but I did not <laughs> stagger or go to the bar or do shit. These guys were fucking amazing. And I listen to them now and I think, uh, mm. but seeing them live, and it, that's what it, that's what it's all about. Like uh, you can listen to album upon album and, and not really like it and then, you know, see them because they're being with bands that you you are going to see. And you realise that fuck, yeah, they're, they're shit. But live, the the thing that what they put out is yeah. is fucking fantastic. Well, some bands yeah. are live bands, I, I believe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. I find Metallica. Uh, 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 Look, like I, I don't sit there and listen to Metallica. They're no, no, and me, and me either anymore. Yeah, like, it, like, but talking about what you're talking about, like, it, for me, uh, Slipknot were, were one of those bands. Um, I don't, I, I, I like heavy, but I sort of like a little bit more commercial heavy. Uh, so getting into, you know, a lot of Slipknot stuff can be a little bit full on. But um, when I saw them live, I literally did not move, watched the whole show, and was just taken back by the whole spectacle of what what they do live. Like it was just next level i'd sort of never seen anything like it so yeah but like you said i, I don't whack on any of their albums or any of that but you know uh like i've definitely got a newfound respect for them i can't hear there mate <laughs> yeah now you can yeah yeah it's it's yeah, I'm just in. I've only been into this Zoom shit for since November oh, last mate. year. Te- te- technology's not my friend, mate. Technology definitely not my friend. Yeah, <laughs> I'm lucky. My um, my best friend, my my director, my producer, my fucking editor. <laughs> he um he he can turn a computer into a fucking a love doll. Like the yeah. guy's amazing. You know what I mean? So I'm lucky I've got him on my side. Sorry. Well, that's the same with us with our with our album. Like Andrew uh, can do everything 
yeah, like when it, you know, uh, we're, you know, when you come into anything you know, technological, we're only limited by our imagination because he can do it. You know, like um, I think in one of the songs, I wanted to put a sitar in, um, and he's like, "We can do it, but I don't think it's going to sound good." So we did it. It didn't sound good, but I'm yeah. still glad that uh, that we we uh, you know, we can do things like that. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed it didn't sound good. To be quite honest, I just I'm wasn't a- that for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just a big Rodriguez fan, and he he played the sitar the whole like Ooh, through a yeah. lot. Of things. So, um, okay, this is the best gig you've been to. Have I asked this? No, no, no. Good, good, good. Best gig I've ever been to. Oh, um, oh, look, I'd have to say the first time I saw Lincoln Park. Uh, would okay. probably, be, but and that, that was on their hybrid theory, so it was right when their first single just came out. Uh, and uh, I actually didn't go to see them. I was a big, oh, I still am. I saw them the other week. I'm a big fan of Sunk Lotto. Uh, okay. Sunk Lotto were actually opening that show. So I actually went to see them and I'd only just heard that one Linkin Park song and I thought, oh, well, that'd probably be all right. And um, yeah, it turned it like the first time I saw them, it was one of those moments where you watch a band and they blow your mind where you think, okay, this is where the level is now. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, I thought it was down here. Now it's like. <laughs> like if Lincoln Park play, played tomorrow night, would you go see him? 100%. Yeah. Who's, I feel really ignorant on this, but who's who's the vocalist? What's, what's the deal with Lincoln Park now? Well, Lincoln Park aren't really doing anything now it's more like Shinoda doing a side project thing like yeah, Chester Bennington obviously died a few years ago yeah, exactly. uh, so they're really, yeah so they're really not doing anything with the Lincoln Park name I believe they're still doing a lot of stuff together and stuff like that but they're sort of leaving that alone I reckon they will eventually do some sort of a tribute show with with, with someone else and stuff like that eventually who, but who would you think would be the best it's well, I did watch the tri- I did watch the tribute. I did watch the tribute to him, and a couple of people done okay jobs. The one person that came to mind even before I saw the tribute, uh, who had the same tone of his voice, is the singer from uh, Derek from Sum Forty One. Okay. Uh, so he he has that range. I wouldn't say he's quite at Chester's level. He's a bit more of a punk singer, but he definitely can pull out those similar things. But in saying that, I don't really want to necessarily see a rehashed version. Like I respect. Yeah, even if they left it alone, I can respect it. It, it. it was what it was, and and I'm all right with that. But same with the Pantera thing. Like I'm open with seeing the new form of Pantera. Um, like I, is it the same? No, it's not the same. But it's the best we're going to get in 2022. You know, <laughs> and I think that's the way you got to look at it. You know. But um, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I totally agree with. So, um, the album's coming out soon. Yeah. Or at the end of the year. Um, are, are, are you happy with? Are you happy with what you've you're you're, you're bringing out? Is, is oh, this oh, this will this will be by far, and I'll go on record to say that it's the best thing this band will have ever released up until well, this hey, point. How long you've spent a lot of time. <laughs> that's right, and that's that's why we're we're guaranteeing that because there's no way that we've spent this much work not for it to be the best thing that yeah, uh, that, that, that we've done but um yeah like we, yeah um yeah like we're super happy with that. like and i think what's helped us this time is having a label involved and sending our demos to the label and the label giving us feedback stuff like that like someone else telling you you're doing the right thing keep doing it the way you're doing it don't change anything um that gives you confidence as well so I think uh, having a third party uh, really uh, understanding and really getting behind it because it's something different for us. It's, you know, we are you know, a little bit tentative around how it's going to do because people who like our first stuff won't necessarily like our new stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And- my, my, my producer said that it's, it's probably going to be a defining moment for the band. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's and that's sort of the, the worrying thing about it because, like, you put everything into this and it's either going to sink or swim, you know. Um, but, like, I, I think when you first start, like, I want everyone to like it and and that was what I was sort of 
I was, we were writing in that realm as we're writing something different, but I want to make sure that it goes down well. And I think halfway through this process, we've sort of come to the conclusion that if we like it, it doesn't matter. You know, if we like it, I think everyone will like it regardless, but even if it doesn't, we've done it the way we wanted to do it and we're happy with it and we can live with that. You know, Uh, I think, I think it's a lot better to say fail being yourself than succeed being someone else. Yeah, well, I I don't think you can spend that much time on an album and not have at least half the listeners wanting wanting to fucking you know own that oh, album. Hundred you know, percent. Yeah. Well, we've already released the first, we've released the first single, which is called Alpha. Uh, that got released uh, about oh, most close to a year ago now. That's that's going to be the leading track off off that album. We've actually got that all done and dusted and, and ready to be able to buy us some time to finish the rest of the album. Uh, so that that was definitely like all the feedback we got from that single. Uh, that pretty much assured us that we're on the right road. <laughs> yeah, you know, like uh, a lot of people were like, "Man, this is next level." That's just yeah, you know, and it's like that was what we're going for. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, there was a there was a comedian in England that um he he used to he, he sat down on a chair and told jokes, and um when he put his beard down, that meant it was time for the crowd to have their little bit. So I'm putting my beard down, and. What's the best bit of advice you've got? Because I'm going to the toilet, so no brown eyes, no brown eyes or nothing. Tell you, mate, no brown I'll keep eyes. It, I'll keep it PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What's the best bit of advice you've got to bands that are, that are starting up right now or thinking about starting up? What's the best bit of advice you can give? Okay. Best, best advice I can give to people starting out. Uh, first of all, practice a lot. <laughs> uh, you, the more you practice, obviously, the better you'll be. Um, probably the next tip is get a group of people that are like-minded and keep the band together. The longer the band stays together, uh, the better everyone will be, better everyone will get as a whole, and that will just make things run smoothly, I guess. Um, don't be nervous. Don't be shy. Uh, if you have to have a couple of drinks before you play, have a couple of drinks before you play. Um, just get yourself, do whatever you've got to do to get yourself in the mood to play. Um, there's plenty of times where people, you have to play a show and you're not in the mood to play a show, but there's also a lot of different ways that you can get yourself ready to play a show and get yourself into it. So probably the main things. Um, well, what else? Uh, by Buy good gear. Um, if you don't buy good gear, you'll eventually just buy more gear. <laughs> so buy, buy what you want straight off the bat, um, and that way you don't have to upgrade ten thousand times like we all did. <laughs> um, and most oh, look, most importantly, I would probably say have fun. Uh, a lot of people. You know, musicians who have been playing for years, you get into a cycle sometimes where it's all about producing and playing the shows and getting everything done rather than just having having fun with what you're doing. So having fun with what you're doing is probably one of the main pieces of advice I reckon I would give. Make sure you're enjoying it because if you don't enjoy it, no one else will enjoy it. That's it. Um, <laughs> No, I, the toilet's not that far away from where I am, so I heard everything you said, and that's, that's all right. I just a bit of a ramble, but I, I, I hope that I hope that helps somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Um, I'm, I've been um, reading. I read the comments on my show and all that sort of shit, and um, my show's been going for an hour and a half. Blah blah blah. And I've gotten all these comments saying, oh, your show is great, but you've, it's just a bit too long. Well, so I try to keep it as in an hour. And, I, mate, I'd love to talk to you for another two hours. <laughs> like, this has been great. That's good, um, man. We can do it again sometime. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, when this album comes out, I'd love to do an album review with you. Oh, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, thank you so much. 
appreciate appreciate you you taking the time out to be on the show and and the last bit that was a great bit of advice to give to to to, to you know to up and coming bands like it's I think you know the chats hopefully they heard that but um anyway it's, <laughs> no worries about. <laughs> Yeah, thank, well, thanks very much for, ha- for having me and uh, for all that you do for all the bands. And um, like I, I started that uh, Australian Alternative Music scene page on Facebook, and I see you posted there a bit. I'm always there to support people that support the scene, and I think that's what everyone needs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every, everyone needs to realise that it's not a competition. Where you know, like music isn't a competition. It's it's we can all support each other, and we can all do this together. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, man. Cheers, brother. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah, have a good one, Matt.